All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 11, verse 7. But notice that, obviously, that the Antichrist, man, that he's a very powerful figure. Verse 7, and when they shall have finished their testimony. So they left behind a testimony for the Jews and for the world. When they finish, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit. This beast, notice, he comes up out of the bottomless pit. Wait a minute. Do you recall Revelation 9? Remember way back at Revelation 9, the bottomless pit was referring to hell over down here. In this bottomless pit over here, someone is coming out. It is, notice, the beast. So there is that Antichrist, that man of sin. So here comes the Antichrist coming out of there. As he comes up out of the bottomless pit with his bow, he comes from out of there, it says. He ascendeth out of the bottomless pit. Shall make war against them. He wars against the two witnesses. Okay, now here's the question then. Where did this beast come from? He came from hell. Why? Because he went down to hell. Why did he went down to hell? Because he died. What are you talking about? Keep your hand at Revelation 11. This happened at the latter three and a half, right? We saw right here. This has to happen during the latter three and a half where the abomination of desolation is spreading and the two witnesses show up, right? Notice that this beast, something happened to him. Revelation chapter 17. Revelation 17. Verse 11, Revelation 17, verse 11. Something happened to this beast. He came up out of the bottomless pit. Why? Because he went down there. The beast went down to the bottomless pit. Revelation chapter 17, verse 11. And the beast that was, uh, excuse me, uh, Revelation 17, 11, the beast that was, so he was there, right? Was is a linking verb, meaning existing, right? Beast that was, he was previously there and is not. He's currently not there. What happened? He's gone. His existence is gone. E why is that? Even he is the eighth and is of the seven. Here's the explanation. And goeth into perdition. See, he went down there. Why? Because he died. If you look at Revelation chapter 13, Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. And then we'll read verse 3. Uh, well, verse 2, it says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. So that's talking about the beast, right? The beast, what happens to him at verse 3? And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. See, he got an injury on his head here. In his head, he was wounded to what? Death. He died. But what happened? The deadly wound was healed. See, he, there's no doubt. So then he got shot right here. Bam. I know, that's a very violent picture, all right? In YouTube, I'll make sure to mark down this is not for children, right? I'll make sure to do that. <laughs> so notice right here, bam. He got shot, went to the bombless pit, but guess what? He comes out. He resurrects. This would also make sense if we look at Revelation 13, 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. This beast does not come out from the bottomless pit. He comes from the Mediterranean Sea. Remember, I already explained why this is a Mediterranean Sea. I'll explain it more when I get to Revelation 13, maybe. But I already explained a lot at Revelation 10 before. Okay, anyway, so this beast is coming out of the Mediterranean region, not from the bottomless pit. So we see right here that when the 
Antichrist, the beast first shows up, he can't just come out of the bottomless pit like that. That's not how it works. But it shows that Revelation chapter 11, sometime in the latter three and a half, he's got to come out of the bottomless pit. What's the explanation then? The explanation will have to be then, originally he came from the Mediterranean region, then he gets killed at Revelation 13, he goes into the bottomless pit. It says he went into, he went down. See, so that means he was existing and then he died and he had to go down. And then what happened? The verse shows that Revelation 11, he comes back out of perdition, out of the bottomless pit. So that would make sense then. All right, let's go back to Revelation 11. Revelation 11. You also notice that Revelation chapter 6, when they opened the seal, he just came out of nowhere. You notice that as well? So it seems to match up this way. It seems to match up more there where the Antichrist, he's going to have to come out of a Mediterranean region somewhere. Then someone's going to kill him, injure one of his head. Then he's going to go into perdition, but then he's going to come back out resurrect himself from the dead like Jesus he's gonna to try to imitate Jesus so probably you can do three days and three nights come out prove himself that he is God Almighty Jesus Christ like that all right Revelation chapter 11 verse 7 the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them so the beast will be fighting he'll be warring with these two witnesses and guess what and shall overcome them and kill them. Notice that he wins against the two witnesses and he's able to kill them. Verse 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. So notice right here that the two witnesses, their dead bodies are going to be in, out in public in the street of the great city. The same context of this great city we already saw was at verse 2, the holy city. So it's Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is known as the holy city. If you further doubt me, let's keep reading right here. The streets of the great city, Jerusalem, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Man, that's pretty strong right there. So notice right here that this location where the Antichrist is desecrating, it's going to be known as Sodom. Why? Because the practices of the satanic system has always been similar to two places, Sodom and Egypt. Notice it says spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, right? That means this spirit of Sodom, this spirit of Egypt, there is that kind of demonic spirit that's been caring. Look back at the two, past 2,000 years of church history. Didn't you see the, these spirits prevalent even today? Yeah, I'll tell you this Egyptian spirit that's prevalent today. You know where it's prevalent in? Translation. Yeah, boom. In these, in these oh, godly translators who love Jesus. No, that's an evil spirit. That's the spirit of Egypt. Alexandria, Egypt. Correcting God's Bible. That's a demonic spirit. So James White is demon-possessed. He's full of the devil. Jeff Durbin is full, he is full of Satan himself. Amen. These, these people who created these modern versions, man, they're demon-possessed, man. You know why? They have the spirit of Egypt. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, you, why do you use Egyptian texts then That's for right. the Bible? And if you claim to be spiritual by doing that, then there's only one spirit that will explain that, the devil. Amen. You see San Francisco, mm -hmm. this spirit of Sodom all over, oh, yeah. filled with wickedness, mm -hmm. college campuses flooded, flooded with this spirit of Sodom, Sodomites, man, yeah. wicked, it's spreading all over, spreading all over. You know where our church is planted in? Sodom and Egypt, man, yes, yeah. Sodom and Egypt. It's Egypt all over, Sodom all over, man, pure wickedness. We got the city of Sodom. At San Francisco and we got an Egyptian museum nearby over here at the city <laughs> by the way it's Rosicrucian too which is pretty interesting huh Rosicrucian uh, all right anyway let's go back to our main text so notice Jerusalem is called Sodom and Egypt 
That spirit, if people dig into the conspiracy stuff, they, they see these two spirits undoubtedly and they talk about it. Which is why Jerusalem it has the same spirit. So I don't know why conspiracy theorists don't realize that, yes, God took it as a matter of fact that his city would have these conspiracies and these elites spreading about. Yep. Sodom and Egypt is in, that, is in Jerusalem within the Jews. But that doesn't mean that, oh, so then these are not God's chosen people. No. You know what he said? It's called Sodom and Egypt, but what did he call it at verse 2? He called it the holy city. It's his holy city that was corrupted yes, by satanic forces. That's the accurate way to say it. Right. That's the accurate way to say it. Not it's completely Satan's city. No, it's a holy city that was corrupted by satanic forces. Get rid of that anti-Semitism, man. Yeah, it's demonic. It's demonic. Now, we know this is definitely Jerusalem because it's proven at the latter part of verse 8. Where also are what? Lord, Lord was crucified. See, that, that's no doubt Jerusalem. See, Jesus Christ, where was he crucified? At this, which vicinity of the city? It's Jerusalem right there. See? So that's why we know that this has to be referring to Jerusalem. I mean, he mentioned the temple here for crying out loud. In the same context of the city. A lot of people would like to say, no, this is Babylon, not Jerusalem. No, it's not. Okay? Look at the book of... Okay. It's called the Holy City. Babylon is never called the Holy City. You want to call Babylon the Holy City? I'll tell you who wants to call Babylon the Holy City. The Roman Catholic Church. Right. You can support them if you want. But look at Revelation 21. Revelation 21. There's no doubt the term holy city is connected to Jerusalem. There's no doubt. You know why? Revelation 21, verse 2. Revelation 21, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, what? New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem. See, God connects Jerusalem to the holy city. There's no doubt. Okay, let's return to our main text. There's no doubt. Jerusalem is known as the holy city. Well, these Jews, they can't be God's chosen nation, God's chosen people. No, it's a holy city that was originally from God, and he told you it would be corrupted by the Antichrist forces. But guess what? It's not forever. In their mindset, these Jews are forever damned, forever cast aside. No, it's temporary. It's till this timeline of the tribulation is up. And then guess what God does? He takes back the city. Some people would like to say, oh, the, uh, what I think Babylon is, it's not Rome, it's Jerusalem. Well, no, that's what Satan wants you to think. Mm -hmm. Satan wants you to think that Babylon is God's chosen people, the Jews, that it's not referring to his secret church, his secret city that's been the enemy camp of the, during biblical times and throughout the past 2,000 years and even right now, and that is Rome. If you think so, then here's something to think about. You got to realize that if you want to claim that verse 8, okay, so it's talking about Jerusalem. So Jerusalem has to be the Babylon of Revelation 17, 18. Then what are you going to do with verse 2 where God calls it the holy city, right? See, so that can't be Babylon. I mean, so Rome, it's not talking about Excuse me, let me fix myself here. So Babylon is not referring to Jerusalem then. It's referring to Rome. Because Babylon is never considered a holy city to God. But Jerusalem is. Now here's another thing. What are you going to do with Revelation? Go to Revelation. We're going to look at Revelation. And then we're going to look at chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 18. Notice what God does with this city. Look at verse 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone. At Revelation 18 verse 21. And cast it into the sea saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be what? Found no more at all. Wait a minute. Didn't? The Bible says that the holy city 
that God, he's going to restore it again in the future, Jerusalem. What? But Babylon is no more found at all. No so Babylon cannot be Jerusalem. Whoever's teaching you that is someone of that anti-Semitic demonic spirit that you should avoid like the plague. Amen. All right, let's go back to Revelation chapter 11. And we have to close it off here, verse 9. So we'll close it here. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations. So notice that every person, everybody of different tribes and tongues, languages, and nations around the world shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. Three and a half days they see their dead bodies lie. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. They're, not, they're going to let their dead bodies lie on the streets and they're not going to bury them. Wow. Man, yeah. I thought this was a world of love and peace. Yeah, come on, come on. No, love and peace on their terms. Uh -huh. You're considered terrorist and hate group. So because you're outside the love and peace, we can do what we want with you. That's, right. That's what they're going to do. All right, I got some very interesting teachings about three days and a half, which has to do with Jesus' crucifixion burial. Mm -hmm. And then also some other interesting stuff, but we, uh, but we will cover that next week. All right, so we got to close it here.